Love them or hate them, I think we can all agree that spiders are totally fascinating. These creatures, at biggest the size of one of our feet, and at smallest the size of a teeny tiny little itty bitty fingernail, have been known to make grown men shriek with fear and make the most fearsome of fighters cower in a corner. From a terrifying desert-dwelling arachnid to a yellow-bellied specimen with toxic venom, here's the 20 most dangerous spiders in the world. <sighs> Number 20, Camel Spiders. So you wouldn't think so from looking at it, but this creature is capable of killing even a lion. Or not. A lot of fake news has circulated about these creatures since the start of the century when soldiers in Iraq, during the war in 2003, posted pictures of the creatures in which they looked like they were gigantic. Suddenly everyone was terrified of the beastly giant camel spider, which looked like it were half the size of a human the hobbit-sized human anyway, scuttling around the desert waiting to tear ferociously into the flesh of any combatant it could get its legs on. The reality is much less terrifying. Due to an effective scale, in the photos the spiders looked massive, but in reality they're actually around 6 inches long. Which is big, but not as big as they made it seem. Nor are they intent upon devouring human flesh. While they are really powerful predators, consuming lizards, small birds, and insects, they don't follow humans around trying to pounce on them. The reason that they're often seen following people is because they like shade, and human silhouettes give them shade. They also don't have a special toxic venom to disable their prey instantly. Though if you get bitten by one, it would hurt, but you wouldn't be poisoned. One final myth about these creatures to debunk? They're not actually even spiders. They belong to the class Arachnida, but they're actually Sulpugids. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Yellow Sack Spider. This little fellow has much less of a reputation, but its bite may be worse than the camel spiders. The yellow sack spider is quite delicate looking, and it's also tiny, ranging in size from about half a centimeter to one centimeter, so around the size of a fingernail. However, its venom is a cytotoxin, which means it can kill the flesh around the area that it bites. For most people who are bitten by one of these, they have a blister and not much more trouble than that. Though in the very worst case, there could be vomiting and fever. These spiders are also extremely common. They're found everywhere in the world except Antarctica, and because of their size, it's easy for them to infiltrate human spaces. This spider accounts for more human bites than any other kind of spider. The coloring, too, makes it possible for them to blend in easily with walls and wainscoting with their practically translucent bodies. You might, on occasion, even find one in your bed with you. And this may provoke a bite. Don't reach for the raid just yet though. Yellow sack spiders are actually very helpful in that they prey on pests in orchards, for example, so they could be saving your summer fruits. Number 18, Brazilian Wandering Spider. Now, if this creature was in your bed, you'd probably notice pretty quick. It's a very dapper and bright character with its striped legs and its yellow and red coloring. It gets its name from the fact that instead of having a web, it just likes to stroll around the jungle floor during the night. In the daytime, it relaxes in termite mounds or banana plants. If the way that it looks doesn't frighten you, think for a moment about its name. When it's not answering to Brazilian wandering spider, it's called Phonutria, which means murderous in ancient Greek. Why? The venom. This spider has the dubious honor of being named the world's most venomous spider by Guinness World Records on multiple occasions. Experiments using mice have found that they were killed with an injection of just 0.006 milligrams of venom. The smaller you are, the bigger the impact of the venom, so children are especially at risk. With anti-venom, however, the chances of dying are very low. There are nine species of them, and they only live in Brazil, and other parts of Central and South America, so if you don't live there, you're safe. If you do live there, don't wander around the jungle at night. Number 17, Wolf Spider. Wolf spiders have quite a reputation to live up to with that name. 
The reason they're named after Canis lupus is because of the way that they hunt. They're extremely quick, and they like to pounce. Unlike a bite from a wolf, however, which could see you lose blood and maybe even flesh, the bite of a wolf spider is more likely to give you a fit of dizziness and maybe a spell of nausea. When I tell you about their method for disposing of prey, though, it might make you feel sick. They like to liquefy their prey, or make it into a kind of gloopy meatball to make it easier to digest. What's really striking about them is the way that they look. They have eight eyes in total to match their legs, but separated into one row of two and then two sets of two. This gives them wonderful eyesight, which combined with their speed means they don't have to bother making a web to catch prey. They'll see it quickly enough. They're very versatile in terms of living conditions. You can find them anywhere in the world, sorry arachnophobes, even in the Arctic Circle. Another cool fact, the Antil pink toe wolf spider changes color as it gets older. I don't know any wolf that does that. Number 16, Goliath bird eater tarantula. This spider has a claim to fame, not quite as impressive as the Brazilian wandering spider's claim to high venom status, but still. The Goliath bird eater tarantula wears the title of largest spider in the world. This isn't just in weight, up to 175 grams, but also in body size, up to 13 centimeters. They also have longevity on their side. These spiders can live up to 20 years. It's only found in northern South America. Like the camel spider, the Goliath bird eater has been a victim of fake news. They don't even eat birds, except maybe very rarely. The name came from a famous 18th century engraving of another kind of tarantula feasting on a hummingbird. Most of the time, they're just happy munching away on rodents and frogs. While they make a formidable impression with their size and hairy legs, humans don't have anything to fear, as the bite's the equivalent of a wasp sting. As a matter of fact, the spiders are more likely to be preyed upon by humans, as in some parts of South America, Goliath bird eater tarantula is a delicacy. You have to start off by singeing the spines on its legs, but once that's done, you can roast it in banana leaves. Yum. Number 15, Fringed Ornamental Tarantula. This spider has a fancy name and a fancy fringe. Somehow, I still don't think that most of us would really consider this beautiful enough to put on our mantelpiece. It's extremely hairy, like the Wookiees of the spider species. But unlike Chewbacca, it doesn't want to hang out with you in the Millennium Falcon and have a fun time. It's much happier in its native climate of Sri Lanka, where it lives, preferably in forests. It was first found in 1899 by the British zoologist Reginald Eines Pocock, who maybe felt an affinity for it since with its multicolored appearance, it's something of a peacock. Unfortunately, the bite of this tarantula is particularly vicious. While it won't kill you, it has famously painful bites, which cause spasms and cramps. The males live up to three years and the females 12. They generally like to eat beetles, grasshoppers, and moths. An interesting feature of this spider is that it has fangs which point downwards rather than ones that are more like pinchers. This means they have to actually stab their fangs into the prey. Many tourists go to Sri Lanka for their beautiful elephants, leopards, and turtles, but remember, there's spiders there too. It looks good in its fringe, but watch out, man, it's dressed to kill. Number 14, Six-Eyed Sand Spider. We've had an eight-eyed spider, and now it's time for a six-eyed one. Like the eight-eyed wolf spider, the sand spider has this name for a reason, namely the fact that it's likely to bury itself in sand. It lives in South America in the desert, and its specialty is digging itself into the sand, maybe with just a leg or two sticking out, and then pouncing when prey comes by. You want to steer clear of these spiders. They're not called murder, sicarius in Latin, for nothing. Its venom, which is potent cytotoxin, is very powerful. It can kill a rabbit in five hours. This venom has the double deadly combination of being hemolytic, which means it causes blood vessels to puncture and blood to seep out, and necrotic, which means that it can cause flesh to rot. So unless you fancy having leaky blood vessels and decaying flesh, best stay clear of this guy. Since they live in remote deserts, however, where there don't tend to be a lot of humans, there aren't that many recorded fatalities. In the two known suspected cases of sand spider bites, however, both were bad. In one, the victim lost an arm due to intense necrosis, and then the other died hemorrhaging as if they'd been bitten by a rattlesnake. Make sure you got your desert boots on. Oh, and one more thing, there's no anti-venom. Number 13, 
Mouse Spider. Australia is a place known for its huge variety of megafauna, but also for its terrifying array of apex predators and creepy crawlies. The mouse spider has a similar level of venom to the funnel web spider, who we met earlier, and is also pretty hairy. The mouse spider has massive fangs, which make it look rather intimidating, and also not like any mouse I've ever seen. Despite these warning signs, the mouse spider actually does what are known as dry bites. This is to say bites with no venom, which basically means they can't do too much damage to you. Furthermore, they're not particularly aggressive, so in that respect, I guess they are a bit like mice. They got their name from the belief that they make burrows like mice, which they actually don't, which just goes to show you how little we know about how many of these elusive spiders there are in the world. They like to eat scorpions, wasps, and centipedes. They reach up to three centimeters, and they exhibit sexual dimorphism, which means you can distinguish between the male and the female. They have different forms. Oh, and by the way, in case you're not in Australia and so you thought you were safe, South Americans gotta watch out too. You might find them in Chile. Number 12. Hobo Spider. The hobo spider, another one of the funnel web family, is a problem spider for a number of reasons. First, unlike many of the spiders we've encountered so far, this little beast is not shy. He's not necessarily more scared of you than you are of him. No, he's actually really aggressive. And as a bonus, you'll find him all over the place, in Europe and in North America. And then the, the final piece of bad news is they also have a toxic venom which can cause necrosis. that flesh-rotting stuff that we already talked about. Oh, you want to hear more? Well, they like living around human habitation. If you get bitten by one, you'll most likely have a headache, and you'll be left with a wound that'll take a very long time to heal. In the US, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, whose jobs include working out which creepy crawlies could hurt us, they're listed as perhaps the most venomous of the three poisonous spiders to be found in the US. That being said, there isn't that much evidence that they're extremely dangerous. Indeed, in Canada, there is a dispute as to whether their venom does actually cause necrosis. So the jury's out, but I personally would still avoid being trapped in one of their sticky funnel webs. Number 11. Brown Recluse Spider. This spider mainly lives in the warmer parts of the south of the US, where it's not just called the brown recluse, but also the fiddleback or the reaper. Reaper's an okay name, but maybe grim reaper would be more fitting, since this small creature's venom has necrotic qualities. If you get bitten by one, the flesh around the bite may well die, though most likely you won't from one bite. But in the worst case of necrosis, a skin graft might be required, or even amputation. There's currently no treatment for the condition which is provoked by the bite of one of these spiders, which is called loxicellism. When loxicellism occurs, an open sore forms, and the flesh around the bite begins to rot. The results can be disfiguring. The brown recluse is also known as the violin spider because of a clear mark on its cephalothorax, which is its head. These spiders don't spend much time in their web, preferring to stroll or run around, and because they like to live in undisturbed places, you might find them in an attic or a cellar. They also like living in the walls. Take care when going up to the attic or down to the cellar. Make sure you stay out of their way. For the walls, you just gotta hope they don't come out. Number 10. Red Widow Spider We've all heard of the Black Widow Spider, mainly because its cannibalistic antics have captured the popular imagination. Many a husband killer has been given this nickname. The Red Widow, however, is a much rarer species than its black cousin, and it only lives in Florida. Plenty of unsuspecting wealthy male tourists there. The female, as is the case of the Black Widow, is much bigger than the male, and they can reach up to 6 centimeters in terms of leg span. It's a distinctive reddish color, and just like the Black Widow, it likes to make a feast of its male counterpart after mating. The good news for all of us is the Red Widow spider isn't aggressive, so despite the fact that it does have a powerful venom, it's unlikely to hurt you except by accident. Interestingly, the Red Widow spider is actually a threatened species because their habitat's being destroyed. It lives in sand pine scrub habitats among shrubs like palmettos. Without these, it can't survive. They use their habitat well. They cleverly bind the palmetto leaves to make a web in which it can hide, mate, and even keep eggs. The web has a special magic power. It's invisible during the day. You can really only see it on a foggy morning, and we'll be seeing even less of them if the destruction of their habitat keeps happening. This is one spider whose loss we should fear rather than the spider itself. 
Number 9. Black Widow Spider Here it is, the iconic Black Widow Spider. Possibly the best known of all the spiders, alongside the tarantula and the daddy longlegs. Despite being only the size of a paperclip, this spider has a fearsome reputation, and with good reason. First, it's venom, which is roughly 15 times more powerful than that of a rattlesnake. Secondly, they're everywhere. In most parts of the US, Canada, and Latin America, wherever it's warm. Thirdly, bites are pretty common. In the US, around 2,500 bites require medical attention annually. Furthermore, I know you thought I ended it at 3. If one bites you, there's a 5% fatality rate. While the bite itself won't feel particularly painful, the subsequent physical effects pack a punch. You'll have difficulty breathing, you might be partially paralyzed, and you'll have aches and pains everywhere. If you get to a hospital, however, you should be okay. And these spiders only bite in defense, so they're pretty unlikely to attack you. But it's still best to be careful if you're in a place where you might find one. They like wood, so be attentive if you're bringing in firewood from outside. Take care to wear shoes when walking around wooded patios. Be vigilant not to sit down on one. A black widow bite will be more than a pain in the butt. Number 8. Red Back Spider the red-backed spider, which lives in Australia, is easily recognizable because of its distinctive red stripe. It's a small spider, about 1.5 centimeters long. Oh, did you think it being tiny meant you were safe from it? Because what it lacks in size, it makes up for in venom. This is a spider that regularly killed people up until about the 1950s. Its neurotoxic venom induces a burning pain before a condition called lactroductism sets in. You sweat, you vomit, your muscles go rigid, and generally, you die. Another problem is the fact that they also love being near human habitats. They like sheds, junk piles, and toilets. In the modern era, fortunately, they account for basically no deaths per year, as an effect of anti-venom exists. Around 250 people are administered this treatment every single year, which just goes to show that bites do still happen. What is interesting with this spider is the fact that it's all about female power. Only the female bite is dangerous, and the female can be as much as 100 times heavier than the male. The female also likes to devour her mate after mating. He thinks they're having some post-mating bonding time. She's gluing him to her sticky web as her next meal. Yikes. Number 7. Funnel Web Spider Funnel webs are a group of spiders who get their name from the distinctive webs that they build, which obviously are in the shape of a funnel, and they're used as a kind of burrow to trap prey. What you need to know about them is they have a very serious set of grooved fangs, longer than those of snakes. If they do bite you, which could happen, for example, if you put on a shoe with one of them hiding in it, they'll envenomate you. This is bad news. They have a powerful venom which contains the right cocktail of toxins to kill a human in as little as an hour, but it could take up to three torturous days. The good news? Anti-venom, once more, comes to the rescue. If you get bitten by a Sydney funnel spider, head to the hospital where they'll give you two vials of antivenom. But they will have to check on you every 15 minutes and give you more doses if you don't respond well. A record-breaking 12 vials were administered to a 10-year-old boy in 2017, after he was bitten by one hiding in a shoe. He encountered it while helping his dad in the backyard. As soon as he was bitten, he started to convulse and froth at the mouth. He managed to recover safely thanks to the quick action of his family and the hospital. His father caught the spider and took it to the Australian Reptile Park, where its venom will be extracted to make an anti-venom to save someone else's life. Number 6. Steetota nobilis. If you know anything about poisonous spiders, which you do now, if you see a picture of this spider, or worse, a real one in your bedroom, you, you probably would think that you need to run for your life. Why? Well, because it looks just like a black widow, and you could be wasting your precious energy because this isn't a black widow, but it looks so much like one it's often called the false widow. Unlike its look-alike, the black widow, Steetota nobilis has no super powerful toxic venom, but it's considered moderately medically significant. Its bites generally cause a reaction somewhat like the one that you'd get from a bee or wasp sting. While those aren't really enjoyable, there's no need for immediate hospitalization. These spiders are originally from the island of Madeira and the Canary Islands, and they made their way to the UK where they're super plentiful in the later part of the 19th century. This might be the UK's scariest spider, but given how few dangerous species there are in the British Isles, that's not like it's saying a lot.
Number 5. Cyropagopus schmidti. This spider wins the award for least pronounceable name. Cyropagopus schmidti is a kind of tarantula, more easily named the Chinese bird spider or Chinese earth tiger. Both of those indicate something about it. It's big and it's beastly. It's found in China and Vietnam, in particular in the tropical rainforests, where it can make burrows that go deep in the ground, only emerging every once in a while to grab food. And what's on the menu tonight? Well, it's not a fussy eater, so it could be just about anything. Cockroach, cricket, mouse. It might also try to take a bite out of you if you happen to disturb it, as it's known to be very aggressive. What's most interesting about it is, as is the case for most of these scary spiders, it's venom. Scientists don't know that much about the venom of the Chinese bird spider, although they are very fascinated by it because it seems to be extremely lethal, at least to mice and rats in lab experiments. Its venom seems to contain a great number of compounds which block neurotransmitters, making it a very formidable foe. Another reason to stay out of that forest. Number 4. Covered Spider I think the last place that any of us really want to find a spider apart from our shoe or our bed is our cupboard. It's 8 a.m., there you are, moving around, trying to find peanut butter, and ow! The cupboard spider, or Stitoda grossa, has snapped at you. How dare you try to touch its jelly? I also agree that the idea of a spider living in the cupboard is pretty grossa, but you don't have to worry much. The cupboard spider actually really likes to keep to itself. It prefers to crawl along floorboards where it's easier for it to get wood lice and crawling insects, which are actually what it uses as sandwich filling. It's also known as a false widow because of its resemblance to the black widow, but again, put down your spider killing apparatus, there's no need, this spider won't do you any harm. It's got very poor eyesight, and when larger creatures, be that bigger insects or giant humans, are around, the spider's more likely to flee than attack. It's found all over Europe, the USA, Australia, and New Zealand, but it's very unlikely you'll find them when looking. They'll scram the moment you open the cupboard. Number 3. White Widow Spider this tiny spider is of the family of cobweb spiders, which includes the other widows, red and black, but this one's white like a bride on their wedding day, so before they've killed and eaten their husband. It looks a little like a crab, and it's extremely mysterious. The bite is definitely venomous, we know that for sure, but because the white widow tends to live in remote desert regions or steppes, it's really difficult to get any information about them, since they don't come into contact that often with humans. You can find it in Central Asia, the Middle East, and North Africa. In comparison to the other widow spiders, this one is pretty rare. In Kazakhstan, however, the white widow is spotted often enough to have graced one of the country's postage stamps. National wildlife icon! Male white widow spiders have quite a hard time of it. They spend most of their life looking for a female to mate with, engage in very energy-consuming courtship rituals, and when they finally mate, she'll most likely eat them and turn whatever's left into something for her to tuck into. Hopefully, we'll know more about these spiders in the future future. In the meantime, the mysteries of the white spider continues. Number 2. Ornamental Tree Trunk Spider This is by far one of the jazziest looking spiders, I'd say rivaling the Brazilian wandering spider in terms of sheer colorfulness. Lots of specks and stripes, brown, red, yellow, gray. It's native to Asia, and it's found in the tropical regions of the continent south. in places like New Guinea and Malaysia, as well as China and India. This is another spider who hankers for human company, even when it's unwanted, it's considered an invasive species. It likes to make its habitat on tree trunks or walls of buildings when it can make a web close to the surface. The spider uses this surface as a support, and it eventually manages to make a kind of ladder web, which it can run down and up, but it's also kind of a cup, which it can live in happily. Its colors make it really good for camouflaging, which is bad news for any of you who don't like the idea of a hidden spider on your favorite tree. Despite its name, this isn't an ornament I would particularly like to have in my garden. Number 1. Catapo Spider it's close to Australia, and though it's not got quite such a reputation for scary beasts, big and mini, New Zealand is nonetheless home to an extremely dangerous spider with a catchy name, the Katapo. It's also a widow spider, and you should know by now that these arachnids are not to be messed with. 
The name Katipo is a Maori name, and it means night stinger. There's a black Katipo and a true Katipo, and they live respectfully on the north part of the North Island and the south part of the North Island. With its jet pea-like abdomen and legs, and occasional markings, either white or red, it's warning us not to touch it. It can very easily kill prey which is much larger than it thanks to its toxic venom. Fortunately, this spider is not very interested in humans, and it's also a species under threat, which means that your chances of encountering it are very low. If you do want to observe it in nature, head to the beaches. They like to live here among float sand and driftwood, or in the grasses close to the beach. They love wood. As long as you don't go around overturning logs carelessly, you're unlikely to be bitten by one of these. Well, you're all spider experts now after this countdown, but there's still a lot of questions left. Not least, if you had to eat one, would you rather roast a Brazilian wandering spider in banana leaves, or maybe have a tarantula on toast? Who do you think would win a battle between a black widow and the red widow? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.